Hey, coaches. Welcome back to Season 2, Episode 8, Football Talk with Coach Chip. Today we're going to be looking at the RPO. I know we've done it before. We're going to do a little bit different this time. Gap or zone scheme? Which do you prefer? I was out perusing my Facebook, and not on my page, but some of the groups I'm a member of, and Kenny Simpson, who was on uh, one of our Season 1 episodes from out in Arkansas, had posted a a question on uh, Run Pass Option Football Facebook group. It's a good group. Got a lot of good stuff on there, a lot of good give and take for some coaches, several good members of that group. And the question was, which do you prefer, zone scheme or gap scheme when you're doing an RPO? That's what we're going to dive into today. Let's go. All right, let's look at the zone scheme first. Now, again, this uh, you got to go back to uh, – Season 2, Episodes 2, 3, 4, and look at how I run the zone, and it's a little bit different than some people run it. Um, I don't run it where everybody takes a step in the same direction, and I stress the double teams. All right, so the question was what you prefer, and the coaches got into uh, talking about which one is better and which one's not. Most coaches pretty much agreed it's got to be by your personnel. But I made the point, and I believe it's a valid point, and some of the others did as well, that you have to stress those double teams have to stay intact as long as possible. And the way I teach zone when maintaining those double teams and the coaching point that I use with the kids is you stay on that double team until that linebacker chooses to be blocked by you. Okay, and of course we're not blocking this guy. This is the one we're RPOing with our, uh, our glance route right behind where he came from. And if the dog outside linebacker chases that number two receiver, this guy here is running an under route, and he's going to be open if the dog vacates the flat and goes, unless they just got some kind of unbelievable corner, in which case you're in trouble anyway. That's They're in man over here, and they got you locked down. But now, going back to how we block zone, this guy's locked on right here. He's driving the end. He's got first man his side, and there could be a combo if he's in the A-gap. He's got... The A-gap defender, the A-gap DL, the center always has him. Okay, and then this guy's got the first man on his side, which results in a double team. And this guy right here has got backside. That's because we're not going to the backer because we're RPOing him. And we can do it the traditional way. Okay, but if we're RPOing, we're, this is the guy we're doing right here. So what you do is you stress to these guys, and you have to go back and look at episodes 2, 3, and 4. Okay? of season two of Football Talk with Coach Chip and see how we block and how we run the zone but and how we teach them to do it. And I get into drills in that, everything with you, showing you how to do it. These double team, this the center and the guard, have to stay on their double team until that mic comes up. Because center and guard don't know what the quarterback has seen. And so they got to stay with him, okay, because the quarterback may have given it to the running back right here who's pressing the A-gap. Now, it could bend and break and bang in different places. But this is why we stress staying with the double team. First off, if you just want, want to run the football, you ain't going to run the football if you don't get these cats blocked up front. But you push this guy back here, and I don't care if you drive him 10 yards deep, if these two guys stay on it, again, National Federation rules, it's not illegal downfield because the block was initiated in this area in the neutral zone extended. And Federation rules read that's not illegal man downfield. This guy right here can drive this defensive end beyond the ball being caught. And as long as he stays with him, he's good by the rules. That's why in high school football, you have to stress those double teams. And if you're going to run the zone, you got to tell them to stay on that double team until that mic fits. If that mic stays flat, let him stay flat, even if we give it and we never come off to him, okay? We're going to get four yards. Again, episodes two, three, and four of season two talk more about that. So you've got this. Nobody's downfield unless he just, you know, hits it and forgets it, just touches him and goes straight to Mike. you got a penalty, okay? Take, I mean, they can throw it any time they want to. If he just bangs him and then goes to Mike right now, you got a penalty. If you don't get one, you got one waiting to happen. 
And sooner or later, they're going to get your butt, and it'll probably be in the worst possible time when you got to have it on the third and medium, third and short. And the game is on the line. So you've got to get on him and stay on him until Mike fits up in here because he's reacting to that running back, boom. And even if you come off in here or if you come off late with him, you're probably going to – you're not going to get that illegal man downfield call. Okay? Stay on the double team. This guy here stays on his drive. He stays on his drive. He stays on his block right there. On block, on block, on block. And you got an RPO. Okay? Now, real quick, this is our play where, you know, the quarterback's going to pre-snap over here, say they give us the gift of the outside backer. I call them dogs. Are cheated in here. Then just raise up and throw it out here and take what all we can get. Okay, this is automatic. They don't know if they're getting it or not. It's going to be based on where this dog is. And then, so let's say he's out here. He's taking it away. You got a head on a head, man on a man. Then you run your play. Quarterback's reading the wheel right here. Wheel reacts to the running back coming, running the zone. Boom! Quarterback disconnects, throws the RPO. The double team right here is legal. You don't have anybody downfield. Let's look at the gap scheme. All right, now here's the gap scheme. Now, I drew it up pretty basic. It's the way I think everybody runs the A-gap power. All right, now we're, we're doing cross face here, okay? So, uh, so the quarterback can read this wheel. We're reading the same cap we read on the zone just a minute ago. All right, now here's what I would do. All right, if I'm running RPO and I know I'm reading it, I make a call. It could be anything, you, can, you know, double, deuce, whatever. you got to call a signal that you give them, and that tells that guard – you don't come off of this double team for love nor money. Y'all just going to double his fanny all the way back here. All right? And you got your same rules. You got your gap flip back here, gap hinge. Okay? You got your wrapper right here. And you say, what about him being downfield? I'll get back to him. Got your back block right here by your center. Then you got your double team at the point of attack by your play side guard and your play side tackle. Then you got your what I call a J block, and y'all look at it, you see why I call it a J block. It looks kind of like a J. The kick out on the DN. Again, nobody up front knows what's going on behind them or out here in the in the secondary. So they're blocking the run for everything they've got. It could be a short yard or third and one, and you want to call that stick on the double team and not read it. And even if that wheel reacts to that pulling guard and comes right now and all you need is a yard or two, you're going to get it. But if you want to read it, what you do is you tell this guy right here to, with your call, it's a double. It's not a combo. It's a double. You don't come off. Don't even put your eyes over here when you get that call. It's a straight double team. Double team him back. All right. He said, what about the guard being downfield? This is the joy of gap scheme. And this is why I say either one, whatever suits your personnel is fine as long as you stress these double teams. This wrapping guard will not be too far downfield before that ball is gone. All these people that complain about illegal downfield, illegal downfield, I would say, in on my film study, okay, especially at the high school level, and and watching my film, that if you go back and if you click pause, right when the quarterback is releasing the ball, you're good, okay. We've run the RPO with gap scheme for several years. We run it on Buck even, where you got two pullers. Of course, the first puller on Buck is kicking, so he won't be downfield. The second puller's got further to go on Buck than he does on Power, so he won't be downfield. And so you won't get a man downfield. This rapper, the only one going downfield that will be too deep, it doesn't matter when the guy catches it. Where was the rapping guard when the quarterback released the football? He's going to ride into side right here, reading the wheel. And, and one of the things, I like the zone, because you got a hat on a hat and you got no free runners up front. All right, the gap scheme, I like the gap scheme. I'm not being, you know, wishy-washy. I'm just telling you either one is fine. There's certain things you need to stress, like the double team staying on them. Okay, but the gap scheme, to me, one of the pluses for it is this will has been coached to key that backer. And a lot of times he's looking for that run-through. You know, we had a game this past season that we should have scored three or four more touchdowns, and we were in a dog fight with this bunch. We wound up pulling it out at the end. Good, well-coached bunch. And when we ran power a lot, and this guy right here was coached to run through. 
and we couldn't run our RPO game. The guys just weren't catching the cockeyed football. And we're trying to run the clock out at the end of the game, and this guy here's just running through right here like crazy. Now, here's if you're reading this thing, he sees that guard pull, and that triggers him to come flying downhill right here. Quarterback disconnect. Man, that's pitch and catch. That's something my old buck can do. And so there you have it. It's a short but sweet one. We're 10 minutes in. But guys, listen to me. It doesn't matter if it's zone. If you got zone kind of linemen, by all means run zone, still run your RPOs if that's what you want to do. But you've got to stress the double team. If you want to run gap scheme, because that's the kind of lineman you got, or that's just what you prefer, run gap scheme. Just know the double team needs to stay intact and make a call where he doesn't come off for that wheel backer. And you won't get that man downfield. And remember, that pulling guard, I don't care how good he is, he'll be right about in here when that ball is released. Okay, so all you defensive guys out there whining and belly aching about the RPO game, just go back and hit pause. Now, I'm telling you, there's sometimes, you know, we'll run 10 or 12 of these jokers a game, and one of them, you know, the quarterback will double clutch or something like that. But believe you me, there's no offense coordinator I know that's designing it for that joker to be downfield, especially when you're talking about seven, eight yards downfield, the kind of thing that we're talking about that a lot of people complain about. It doesn't matter when it's caught. It matter where it released. And remember, in high school football, Federation, you folks that play by NCAA rules like Texas, y'all different different kettle of fish, all right? But if your state plays by Federation rules, blocks that are started, initiated, engaged in the neutral zone expanded, that's what the rule reads. It says neutral zone expanded. A lot of us call it the free blocking zone. It doesn't matter where they go, as long as they stay engaged with their blocks. And that includes double teams, and that includes back blocks and down blocks. Hey, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Remember what I always tell you. Be elite and go to my Facebook page, Football Talk with Coach Chip. And I'm at, I'm at Chip Siegel on Twitter. Give me a holler at Siegel.chip at gmail.com. Siegel.chip at gmail.com. All right. Y'all be good, and again, like I said before, be elite.